I can't tell you how excited I am to be in the house, back on this stage uh, at Hope City, and just to watch what God is doing here in Houston and around the world is unbelievable. And you're in the middle of a move of God, and you need to know that, uh, that we serve the God of miracles. We do. We serve the God of miracles. Thank you for those amens to that. Come on, we serve the God of miracles. I'm just fired up to be here today, and uh, I'm going to bring you a word today. If you're taking notes, go ahead and write this down. The title of my message is Live It Up. Live It Up. Live It Up. And if you're not taking notes, write that down. Live It Up. <laughs> I believe that if you take notes, it'll go from uh, not, not being in a place of staying in your head, but it'll get into your heart. Because head knowledge is dead knowledge. That's the way I like to say it. If it's in your heart, oh, it'll come out of you. That's why for me, when I get to come up here and talk about Jesus, oh, it just comes out of me. There's nothing I would rather talk about than Jesus. I love it. And I'm so excited to share with you the word that God has on my heart. But I want to talk from the angle today of John chapter 10, verse 10. If you have your Bibles, you can go there with me. We're going to look at the New King James Version. And if you don't have your Bibles, it'll be on the screen for you. But in the New King James Version, John 10, 10 says this. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And this is Jesus' words. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I want to unpack this scripture and this idea today that you can be full or empty, but you can't be both. There is no in between. You are either full or empty. And I think it's important to understand that the enemy, you have an enemy, Satan, the devil, you have an enemy. And what he'd love for you to believe is that he doesn't exist, because if you think that he doesn't exist, you won't try to do anything about it and about the attacks he's bringing towards you. He only comes to do one thing, and that's to take. But Jesus only came to do one thing and comes to do one thing, and that's to give. So today, I want to kind of approach this opportunity with, with something to give you. If you're walked in here and you're empty, you're depleted of joy, peace, faith, good godly relationships, if you're depleted of all that stuff, all it takes is one moment with the giver and you sit with Jesus, it can all change in an instance. And so I want to set that up on the front end of my message today because I, I don't know about y'all, the last two years to me has been like one big jumbled up year. Anybody else? Like I'm telling you, 2020, we left to go plant the church in March, COVID happened and here I am. Woo, I'm back two years later. Look at it. It's like, I, I, part of it, it feels like I, it's been an eternity since I was up here. Part of it feels like it was yesterday. But I'm telling you, in the midst of trying to launch a church in the middle of COVID, so many churches around the country and the world were shutting their doors. We're just the crazy folks that said, hey, let's go plant one while all of them are shutting. And we've seen people get saved. On Easter, we had uh, our biggest service since launch Sunday. We saw 14 people say yes to Jesus. Eight people got water baptized. It was unbelievable. <laughs> It was unbelievable. And what, I'm, what I am a thousand percent sure of today for every one of you the way you came in is that if you seek Jesus, he will fill you. It's determined by what you do beyond this point. And so as I unpack John chapter 10, verse 10, I kind of want to hit you with a couple of illustrations. Where's my glass half empty people at? Glass half empty people? Where's my glass half full people? Woo! Glass half empty people, y'all ain't gonna raise your hand because you're glass half empty. You're like, you're like I, I can't even raise my hand. Glass half empty. I look, the glass is always full no matter where the line is because wherever the water ain't, there's air in there. Come on, somebody. But I think, okay, there you go. That was for my dad right there. That was for my dad, dad joke. <laughs> what, when I look at things about being empty, one of the worst feelings, where's my cereal fans at? Cereal people? Look, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, anybody? Come on. Oh, let's go, let's go. We're gonna have a good time today. Let's go. <laughs> It is terrible when you're hungry for cereal, you're craving it, and you go pour the bowl of cereal, and then you go to the fridge to get the milk that ain't there. You know what I'm talking about? That's a horrible feeling. I'm empty, and then you're mad at the world. I'm empty. Where is the people that uh, ride with the gas tank on E? Where's my get? We're people, right? Y'all are my people. Look, I just think you're big faith people. That's what you are. You're big faith people. I'm a big faith kind of guy. I'm the type of guy that I'll get in the car and it'll say six miles, six miles left, and I'll go, gas station's 5.1, we good. <laughs> Where y'all at, you know what I'm saying? And my wife can't stand it. She's like, she'll be looking at me like six, we're about to break down right here. I'll make it six miles, six miles, we're gonna make it. <laughs> Where are the people that like, when we get to three quarters, we're filling up. Where y'all at? <laughs> look, look, God's gonna get us there if you're supposed to be there, okay? That's the way I like to feel about it. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. That's free right there. <laughs> no, seriously. When I'm thinking about being empty, we are all empty of some things. And maybe over the course of COVID, you formed some bad habits. 
you stopped some good habits along the way because life got crazy. And now you're walking away and you're feeling empty. I brought a couple of uh, memes that I think will help you with this. Maybe you feel like this walking in, you feel empty. Maybe you feel like this first picture right here. And I love that. You're going to get some, oh, that's cute. I love it. Look at this. When you feel empty inside, but you can't express it because you don't know any words. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that all the time right there. Or, hey, okay, uh, people who ride on E, I'm going to help you. I'm going to bless you. God's good. It's just about your perspective, okay? You just need the right perspective today. Right? Just tilt a little bit, you're gonna be all right. We're gonna make it, okay? <laughs> all right, now this last one, before they throw it up, some of y'all are gonna get it right away. Some of y'all, you're gonna figure it out later or your husband or wife's gonna have to tell you. Go ahead and throw this one up. This took me a minute. Must have been super popular for the rack to be empty. All right, y'all can take that down. Some of y'all are like, what? Nothing's empty, I don't see it. Y'all, it took me about 45 seconds. It's camo, you can't see it, it's empty. Okay, there you go. My wife got it immediately. I was like, oh, I was wearing camo pants last night when we were talking about this. My dad goes, you ain't wearing no pants. I'm like, oh, look at that, I ain't wearing no pants. <laughs> as funny as those things are, some of us are just living lives that way, empty. And when you're empty, you're mad at the world. Your emptiness doesn't just affect you, it affects the people around you. You'll spill out emptiness onto everybody else. I just went through a competition. Anybody ever done a physique competition, bodybuilding in the house? Anybody? I'm curious. I got a hand. I got a couple hands. I got a couple. Okay, so y'all are going to know what I'm talking about. I got my man Max down here. I love you, Max. Max has been coaching me. I just recently did a bodybuilding physique competition. And I have always been the type. I love fitness. I love the gym. And I would see somebody on a magazine cover, and I'd be like, three weeks. Bam. Going to do it. No. Six months. I had no idea what these people had to go through to look like that. So Max is coaching me. For a month, I'm eating nothing but chicken, egg whites, tilapia, and broccoli. No salts, no seasonings, lemon juice. Living over a stove. And I'm like, okay, I can do this. I, like, I feel like I can do some stuff. Well, he calls me one day. He's like, I got, I got something awesome for you. Tomorrow, you get to go eat the world's largest burger and fries. I said, yeah. And he said, but there's a catch. I said, what's the catch? He said, you can't drink a sip of liquid for at least 24 hours. And immediately I was like, I don't know which one I want to do. I don't know which one I like better, you know? So we go through the process, and anyway, he tells me, all right, after you preach on that Sunday, this is like two weeks ago, he said, after you preach on that Sunday, you cut your water intake. So I cut the water intake. We go into the next day. I wake up, before I went to bed, I was like, I got this. This is easy. It's been like 10 hours. Good. Wake up the next morning. Y'all know when you wake up in the morning. Come on now. I woke up in the morning and I was like, Lord Jesus. And so I went and brushed my teeth. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get through. We go have the lunch. At this point, it's been 24 hours since I've had any type of liquid in my body at all. We're sitting there. We're eating this burger. Oh, it is amazing. Megan's taking pictures of me, like all kinds of stuff. And I was solid until about an hour later. And I was like, something's wrong with my tongue. Like I can't, like I was all kinds of, I was parched. So I'm literally, every hour that goes by, I'm going to the sink and I'm just, huh. I'm tapping, I'm patting my tongue. I'm like, this is horrible. And so I'm hitting Max on this video app and I'm like, bro, I hate this, I hate life, and I hate you. Like, that's how I felt in the moment. And so my wife is like, you are mad at everybody. You need to go somewhere. You're snapping on me and the kids. I'm like, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. So finally he tells me, he said, okay, once you get into the next day and you have no more food in your body, I'll say it like that. He goes, you can start sucking on some ice, ice chips. 1.30 a.m., I couldn't sleep. I woke up and went to the freezer and got a piece of ice, and I stood there by the freezer like. <laughs> I mean, I just stood there. I opened the fridge, and I had, y'all know when you got one of them nice cold waters and you open the fridge, and it's like, ah, and then the light shine, that's what it did. And I tried to rebuke the devil, but it was too much temptation, okay? And so I grabbed the water. I was like, just one sip. I took one sip, and I was like, oh. before I knew it, I blacked out, and I drank the entire bottle of water standing by the freezer. And I walked back into our bedroom, and she goes, did you drink some? I said, I did, and I'm proud of it. That's how I felt. That's how I felt. Because I now know what it takes to have abs, and I don't care. I don't, where's my food people at? I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> but here's what I want you to catch out of that story, as funny and crazy as that is. I was empty. And because I was empty, I was snapping on my wife and my kids. I was hating the world. I'm telling one of my closest friends, I hate you. I don't like you. Because when you are empty, you just pour out that emptiness out on the world around you. And I think over the last two years, so many of us have lost our search for Jesus, who is the giver. And we get in these empty spaces, and we just need to be filled. Come on, if you came in today in a space of I'm dry, I'm empty, 
you are in the right place today. Come on, somebody. At every campus, you're in the right place today. And I'm gonna give you some keys that'll help you with this today. And the first one is this. Before I dig into it, I'm gonna give you John 10, 10 out of the NLT from a little bit of a different translation. It says, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. And Jesus says, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Now, the reason I wanted to give you that, that scripture out of a different translation is because I want you to notice something. The enemy has a purpose for your life. And so does God. It's your choice as to which purpose you are going to fulfill. But the enemy will paint a picture for you that looks so good, and all it does is take, 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 take. But the picture that God is trying to paint for you, and some of you today, as I'm talking, the Holy Spirit's gonna begin to work in you, and you're gonna say, I'm gonna go top to that purpose right there, because once you top to the purpose that God has on your life, you will get filled, 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 filled. And so I need somebody to know today that you are called, you're chosen, you are anointed and appointed for a purpose that you have no idea about. And I don't care how you walked in here, I don't care what you walked in here with, it's as easy as one decision. And I'm gonna present this to you today in a way that at the end of our time together in a few minutes that you make a move. Watch it online, you're gonna make a move and you can go from empty to full in a moment. So ride with me today. First thing I want you to know today is this, you have to dream big. You have to dream big. And in order to dream big, usually that's in a place where you start small. And you can't see the big. So you gotta begin to dream big. I love how Ephesians chapter three, verse 20 says it in the message. It says it this way, God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. God can do anything, you know, far more, far more. So I want you to write this down. Your expectation will determine your experience. If you came in here today and your expectation was, I hope they do my favorite song, because if they don't, it's gonna be a bad day. They probably didn't even do your favorite song, and you're like, today's ruined. You got what you expected. But if you walked in here like, today I just need Jesus, I'm telling you, he's in the room. If you showed up expecting him, he met you today. He met you today. But your expectation will determine your experience. If you come in and you're looking, you're like, I don't like the guy on stage singing. I don't like that guy's shirt. Come on, y'all like my shirt. I bought this shirt just for y'all, straight up. I did, I did. Come on now. You're like, oh, that, if that's what you're expecting, that's what you're gonna get. I'm under the impression that God can do more, but it starts when you're at your lowest. And so I love the way uh, the pastor in my past life said it, Pastor Biggie Smalls. He's not a real pastor, just so y'all know. <laughs> he said it like this. He said, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. When I was dead broke, man, I couldn't picture this. 50 inch screen, money green leather sofa. Got two rides, a limousine with a chauffeur. Phone bill about two G's flat. No need to worry, my accountant handles that. And my whole crew is lounging, celebrating every day, no more public housing. And then he says, thinking back on my one room shack. I won't tell y'all what comes after that. <laughs> Past life, Pastor. What I want you to catch is this. What Pastor Biggie tried to tell us here is he tried to tell us that it doesn't, it doesn't just all of a sudden, like, boom. He has to think back at times. I know this is something that Pastor Daniel's been preaching. So check this out. God did not call you to live in a spiritual one-room shack. He calls you to live in a spiritual mansion. So you gotta get in this place of I'm thinking back to where I used to be, but look where I am now and what my God has done. Because when you begin to think what God has done and where he brought you from, oh, it'll change everything. Do you remember where you were when Jesus found you? If y'all saw me and you knew me, you'd be like, get off the stage right now. Me and Pastor Biggie were hanging every day, kicking it. But God showed up and did a radical work in my life. You don't need to stay where you're at. God is calling to you. Come on. Come on. I got more. I want to fill you. I want you to be full. An abundant life is yours. And it's all determined by one thing that I'm going to tie up to with our vision and mission here at Hope City. It's this. Psalms 92, verse 12. Somebody just needs to hear this and let it sink deep into your heart today. The righteous flourish like the palm tree, and they grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. And when they are planted in the house of the Lord, guess what happens? They flourish in the courts of our God. And I think over the course of COVID, every church in America shut down there for a season. We're trying to launch a church. We had to push our launch date back because we couldn't find a venue that would open for us in the middle of COVID. 
and we had to push our launch day back. And I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm stressing. I'm calling, I'm calling them. I'm calling our overseers. Like, what do we do? And I just had to keep trusting God. What matters more than anything in my life is that I stay full of Jesus. If I don't have that, I'm no good to y'all or anybody else. I, one of my pastor mentor friends in Alabama says it like this. He says, if you're not full of Jesus, you are no good to me. That's strong right there. As a pastor, when he said it, I went, oh, okay, I need to be full of Jesus. Because otherwise, I'm just a man. And a man can impress you, but only God can transform you. I need to be transformed by the power of, you know, the gospel's transformation. It's not impression. It's not, it's not like, oh, that was cool. That was fun. No, transformation is the gospel. It's impossible to walk into the presence of God and stay the way you came in. But you got to tap into the presence. You got to get filled. You got to get full today. And that's what I want you to know. Your expectation will determine your experience. What are you expecting? How are you dreaming today? Because you need to dream a little bit bigger. Uh, I read a book recently called The Circle Maker by a guy named Mark Batterson. And he, yeah, come on, it's a great book. I'd recommend it. Great, it'll make you pray differently, believe differently. I need big faith. I need to dream big. But he breaks down the difference that all of us have two sides to our brain. We have a left brain, right brain, all of us. The left brain is responsible for thinking out of logic, reality. That's your left brain. Your right brain is creativity, imagination, dreaming, and what happens is when you're younger, you operate only out of left brain. I have two kids, Makai and Jordan. They're 11 and 9. These cats got some amazing imaginations. And I go into situations with them as their dad, and I love to just get out and play and wrestle and have a good time. And they'll be doing stuff, imagination, bit play. You know, they're pretending they have a play friend, whatever. And I'll have moments in my head, I'll be like, that's stupid. I used to do that. I was stupid. You know, I was, whatever. But what happens is we do this in our relationship with God. You meet Jesus today, you begin to dream bigger. Oh, he's, he's, there's more, there's greater, there's more hope. And you start to operate out of faith, out of right brain, dreams, imagination, creativity. But then as the journey continues to go on, we become stagnant. We stop doing what got us to where we were in the first place. And we start praying out of left brain logic. And we put God in a box that is downsized to the world that we live in. If you want to have more faith, you got to go, all right, God, today I'm going to pray and pray the craziest stuff. I'm not saying he'll do it, but you're much more likely to get what you pray for than if you don't. Usually the people that are mad at God that he didn't answer their prayers are the people that don't pray. I, I need to be praying for bigger grace. And as we planted a church, I'm telling you, God has wrecked me with this. I don't ever want to get caught up reducing God to reality because I don't know if you know this or not. God created reality. He can change it if he needs to. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you got to dream big. You got to dream big. And the best way I see this play out is in a story in Matthew chapter 13. Jesus is rolling through all these towns and he's doing miracles and he's preaching and he's teaching. And it says that he rolls up to his hometown in verse 54. Matthew 13, it says he began teaching the people in their synagogue and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't this Mary's and Joe's son? Aren't those his brothers and his sisters here with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. You can look at Jesus as a carpenter and he can build you a house. Or you can look at him as the God who created the universe and he can change your entire world. But how are you looking at him? How are you looking? Notice they're seeing all these great things. Jesus in the flesh, he's doing miracles. He's restoring sight to the blind. He's raising the dead. And they're amazed and immediately they start trying to put God into their carnal minds and wisdom. And Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 says that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You're not supposed to know. If you knew why and how and when and where, he wouldn't be God. I need a God that's way bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need a God that I can say, all right, God, here's what I need. This is impossible. But with you, all things are possible is what Scripture says. All things are possible. So how are you looking at God? What kind of God is he to you? I believe that your expectation will determine your experience. And it starts with, what are you tasting? What are you tasting? Psalms 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. God is good all the time and all the time? Yes, he is. That can become cliche, but God has been so good to me. Has it been good to anybody else? It's been good to you? Been good to y'all at the campuses? God's been good to me. But what happens is I was tasting all the wrong things. I, I tasted a lot of sin. How many of y'all think sin is fun?
if you're not raising your hand, it's because you didn't do it right, okay? I did a lot of sin. I did it well. I had a PhD in sin. Your boy was good at it. I was real good at it. If, if we didn't like it, we wouldn't keep doing it. But I grew up in a culture where it was like, don't stop, bad, no, no, no. Like I was a dog. That's what I felt like. No, stop. But then I went, I went 10 years away from God, had nothing to do with church, and then the gospel was presented to me in a way that, come over here and taste this, because if you just taste this, you won't want nothing to do with that anymore. This is so much better. I had one taste, and I was hooked. I was like, oh, that was cool and all. Y'all, this is better. Y'all come with me. And now I'm determined to do whatever it takes to help people taste and see that the Lord is good, because I don't know if you know this or not. If you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, everyone wants what you have. Everyone wants what I have. I'm telling you but I gotta give it in a way that makes them wanna come taste, not shove it down their throats. I want you to taste and see that the Lord is good. So you gotta dream big, that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to search deep. You need to go on a journey and begin to search deep for yourself. So I'm gonna give you some stuff that'll help you here today, but you gotta know that your resource for all the stuff you're missing in your life is your relationship with God. That's your resource. We get called up praying for, I need more money, I need a better job, I need to fix this with my health. No, your resource is your relationship with God and then the people around you, which is why here at Hope City, it's so important for you to be in a connect group. You need to be in a group, not because Pastor Daniel and Jackie need you in a group or the church needs you in a group. You need you in a group. Your, your life will never be as transformed as it will until you get connected with other people who are sending you scripture verses and praying with you. And when you go through a tough challenge, they're saying, I got your back, let's go. You need a connect group. It'll change your life. Because James chapter five, verse 16 says, confess your sins one to another and you'll be healed. You want some healing in your life, get around God's people. You get around God's people, you'll find God. Every time, I'm telling you, you gotta get in a group. And here's why, because Matthew chapter six, verse 33 says to seek first the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. But too many times we operate from the basis of seek first all the things and expect God to be added to us. We expect to be part-time employees with full-time benefits. And that's not how God works. God's like, I need all of you. I'm either at the top of your list or I'm not on your list. How many of y'all grew up with the uh, bumper stickers, God is my co-pilot? Y'all remember those? Anybody remember those? God is not your co-pilot. God is the pilot or he ain't in the plane. I gotta put God in the pilot seat. God wants your heart and he wants all of you. He cannot transform who you want to be or who you pretend to be, only who you are from right where you are. Some of y'all came in after hanging out at the club all night last night. Thank you for being here. This is where you need to be. This is where, I'm serious. This is where you need to be. If you came in here all polished up thinking I got it together, I've been following Jesus for 30 years, this is where you need to be. In the house of the Lord, joy lives here, hope lives here, peace lives here. You need Jesus. And this is why you gotta, this is why you gotta search deep and this is how you search deep. We call it the first 15. You need five minutes, the first 15 minutes of your day, every day, seven days a week, yes, on Sunday before church. Five minutes in the Word, five minutes in worship, five minutes in prayer. That can sound so simple, but I'm gonna give you today a seven-day challenge. Seven-day challenge for everybody. For the next seven days, spend the first 15 minutes of your day, five minutes in the Word, five minutes in worship, five minutes in prayer, and then next Sunday, be back in this room. Don't let anything keep you from church. If it's your first time here, I saw some hands, come back next week because you'll get to hear pastors Daniel and Jackie. You need to be back in the room seven days, dig into this. Here's why. You need the word because Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It doesn't say faith comes by hearing and hearing the Sunday message at Hope City. Or faith comes by hearing and hearing my favorite podcast. It doesn't say faith comes by hearing and hearing Pastor Kevin Lucas or Bishop T.D. Jakes. Come on, get ready, get ready, get ready. Oh, that's awesome. You need the word for yourself. You need to hear it. You need to say it. You need to hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. And then you supplement your faith with Bishop T.D. Jakes, right? You supplement your faith at that point. You need that in your life. It'll change everything. Then you need to have prayer in your life as a devotion. Colossians 4.2 says, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. You need to pray twice as much as you think you do. That's the way I always stick into it. And I know Pastor Daniel says this a lot. When prayer becomes your habit, miracles will become your lifestyle. You just need to be a praying person. God will change everything. And then with worship, it'll change your circumstances. It just will. Nothing changes my circumstances internally, the emptiness I feel, more than stopping and pausing and praising. Y'all know that song, Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Y'all know that song? Oh, my soul. 
In that scripture passage, he did not want to bless the Lord in that moment. You need to go read that for yourself. He was struggling. So he said, soul, we're going to bless the Lord right now. Because when I'm empty and I begin to go, God, right now, I pray that you show up. God, you're going to do I'll start running around the room. My wife knows. I'll be in the back like, thank you, Jesus. I'll be getting fired up in the back room at our house. Because praise will stir you up. You need to be worshiping. And here's why James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. We expect to keep running and expect God to chase us. And God's going, make the move. Make the move. Draw near to me. I'll draw near unto you. You need that in your life, your resources, your relationship. And then the third thing you need to do and you will do as you search is you will find more. You will find more. What you're looking for determines what you find. So the emptiness that you're feeling in your life right now is probably based off the search that you have going on in your life. If you're full of Jesus, it's because you're searching for Jesus. Your search determines what you find. I'm gonna give you three scripture passages. I'm gonna blow through them. You can write them down. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Matthew 7, 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Proverbs 8, 17, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently, they find me. These are promises in God's word. These are guarantees from the heavenly father straight to your heart. All you got to do is seek. If you came in here empty today, you need to be filled. How are you searching? How are you seeking? You just need to seek Jesus because the more you seek, the more you will find. And that'll lead me to my closing point. And that is once you begin to do these things and you make them consistent in your life, you can live it up. You can live it up. As we say at our church, Trove Heights, we, we're going to live a rich life with Jesus. But it's all determined by our search. What are we doing? Well, how are we seeking? How are we dreaming? The more you seek, the more you'll find. And you got to know today that blessings are a bonus. Jesus is the prize. Blessings are a bonus. Jesus is the prize. 1 Timothy 6.6 6 says, Now there is great gain in godliness with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. The only thing you brought in the world is you. So if you're empty, and you feel like I have nothing to offer and nothing to give, I love when you see the disciples in the New Testament, they're rolling up, doing miracles, talking to people. Guy asks for some silver and gold. You got silver and gold? He says, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have, oh, I'm about to give you. That's how I picture it when I read it. Oh, I'm about to give this to you. That's how I feel. You want what I have. People in your world want what you have. The power of a living, holy God living inside of you. Maybe you hear me talking about all this today, like, oh, that's cool, that's cute and all, but you're the preacher, you're the pastor, you gotta say that stuff. But I'm telling you, I know this so well because I know a guy. And if you knew this guy, you'd be like, man, there is no hope that guy right there. Maybe you walked in and you feel like there's no hope for me. I'm, I'm, I'm as far gone as possible. This is my last effort to try to get out of my mess. That's where this guy was. And he grew up in church and then graduation night of high school, he decided I'm gonna have one night of fun. One night of fun, just one night. Biggest night of his life. And he ended up from that night taking a week long trip, senior trip to the beach and just living really a pure life of sin and debauchery. That's really what it was. That week-long senior trip turned into 10 years as far away from God and church as possible. Drugs, alcohol, all kinds of craziness. And he told his girlfriend, he said, when we get married, I'll change. And he didn't. And then he said, well, when we have our first kid, I'll change. And he didn't. When we have our second kid, I'll change. And he didn't. And in 2012, he was diagnosed with stage four cancer. The whole world came crashing down. He didn't know, am I gonna die? What's gonna happen? So he got with his wife and he was in a moment of, I don't know what to do. And when you don't know what to do, go to God. He knows what to do. He goes to God. He said, I don't know what to do, but I think we need to go back to church. He started going to church, started going to church regularly every Sunday. I don't know what to do. One foot in, one foot out. I'm all in, sort of, not really, but I, I want to go in, but I love my mess. I love my sin too much. And eventually he went into remission, January of 2013. Doctors cleared him, said, you can go back to work. And he still was just playing that fence, struggling to just give it all to Jesus. And then finally, June 3rd of 2013, a pastor came, visited his church, just like me visiting here with you. And something that pastor said that day, it was like his finger was a mile long, pointing right at him. You're called, you're chosen, you're anointed and appointed. You have a plan, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. A hope and a future is what God's word says about you. And he believed it that day and something shifted and he left. He didn't say yes to Jesus in that moment. He went and drove around the lake and he was broken and he was crying. He was so empty. It was so painful. And right there driving around that lake, he just surrendered it all to Jesus. God, today, 
I can't run anymore. I'm tired of being empty. I need to be filled. God came in like a flood right there. And the next day, he did what any Christian should do, and he enrolled into Bible college the next day. He just began pursuing the call of God on his life. Three years in Bible school, doing an internship at one of the greatest churches in America. And then he found his way to joining staff at a church that God was beginning a radical work. Unbelievable things were happening. He got to be able to do crazy ministry launches and campus launches and see thousands of people come to know Jesus. And then fast forward a few years later, he felt the call of God to go move and start another great ministry so that God could touch more new people and more new people and radically change lots of lives. And the reason I know that story so well is because that guy is me. That guy's me, and I don't know if you came in here looking like that guy right there today, but I'm telling you, God can take it in a moment and turn you into this guy right here. All you gotta do is reach out and grab the hope that Jesus has for you today. You are never too far gone. God always has more. He always has greater. There is a plan, a purpose, a hope, and a future on your life. And it just starts by how are you searching today? And I I get emotional about it because I know where I used to be. I don't know where you used to be, but I see that old guy and I can't believe I get to stand right here, but I have a message that everybody in this world needs. You have a message everybody in this world needs. We have the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ, salvation. I don't care how you walked in here. I'm gonna give you this as a closing thought and just dig in with me on this. Romans chapter eight, verse 31 says this. So what do you think with God on our side like this, how can we lose? If he didn't hesitate to give his son for you, there's nothing else he won't do. Dream big, dream big, search deep, find more, live it up. I found this a couple years ago, right around the start of COVID. And this, this, this is what I needed today. This is what we all need today. And however you came in here, I pray that this hits you. If you're having sex before marriage, come to church anyway. If you're a drug addict trying to beat drug addiction, come to church anyway. If you were out drunk all night last night, come to church anyway. If you don't know what gender you prefer, come to church anyway. If you can't quit that disgusting habit, come to church anyway. Church is a hospital for the broken, the lost, the empty, the confused, the desperate, the rejected. Every sinner has a future and every saint has a past. How do we break the chains of bondage and addiction? By prayer, prayer for you and prayer with you. There isn't a single person in the four walls of this church that doesn't have something we regret about our past or don't like about ourselves. But God knows that His grace is still there and He loves you nonetheless today. He loves me nonetheless. So whatever you've done, whatever you're doing and whatever you will do, come to church anyway. It might just change your life. Somebody needs to hear that today. Ephesians chapter three, verse eight, it describes it as the inexhaustible riches and generosity of Christ. And as we close today, every head bowed in this room, every eye closed, watching online, watching at our campuses, this is what I want you to hear today. Ephesians three fifteen, reach out and experience the breadth, test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. That passage right there starts with one thing, reach out out. If you need Jesus, just reach out. If you need to be full, just reach out. If you need hope, you just reach out. If you need joy, you just need to reach out. Can we do that right now? Every hand lifted across the room, in every room watching. God, today I pray that an outpouring of your Holy Spirit happens on this church, on these people, God, who are reaching out to you for more. God, we we have come in, some of us, empty and broken. And today, that changes in the moment right here as I pray in Jesus' name. Lives are being changed right now at every campus. Fill us full to overflowing in Jesus' name, I pray. And if you came in this room and watching online any campus and you know today, I've been empty my whole life. I need Jesus. I've never, never given my life to Jesus. Today's your day. Maybe over the course of COVID, you follow Jesus and you stop today. Just come home. Just come back. Recommit your life to Jesus today. Right here, right now. No heads looking around. Eyes closed. And I just need every voice in this room, in that room, watching wherever you're at to say a prayer with me, something like this. Say, Jesus, today I give you my life. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are Savior, you are Lord. I'm gonna live for you for the rest of my days. Fill me, Jesus. 
Fill me, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Come on, can we celebrate anybody that said yes?